Hi everyone, welcome to this comprehensive video series about all things 3D modelling in Clip Studio Paint. I hope this series helps with any problems you may have and if you're a beginner this is definitely the series for you as I'll be starting with the very very basics. With that being said, let's get started. Alright, here we are with the canvas and our first model, just a door, very simple. And before we get into anything, I would like to make a recommendation to use a mouse when using 3D models and manipulating them. Not a stylus and not a touchpad mouse, simply because with the left and right and often middle button on a mouse, you're going to have a lot more control of the model and it's just going to make your life so much easier. I am using a Logitech Pebble mouse, not too expensive, it's Bluetooth or USB connected, so it's a really great one, I've had no problems with it. I promise we were going to the very basics, so I am going to start at the very very basics, and that is the 3D layer itself. Over here, in the layer properties, if for whatever reason you don't see this, it should be the default when you open up Clip Studio, but if you don't see it, simply go to Window, and then go down to Layer and it will pop up. When we go over to here, in a layer and you see this little icon it's like a pyramid in the background the gray black that means it's a 3d layer and clip studio is really good with this most of its specialty layers are going to have very specific icons so if you see a pyramid that is a 3d layer or there are objects on that layer that have 3d and it has a tiny little cube in the corner here and that means it's a vector layer and the, the difference between a raster layer and a vector layer as you see here we've got my sketch which you can't see right now it's just very basic a room and we've just got this vector layer because uh, it has the cube. And the difference between them is a raster is a flat image. If you think of it, it's a JPEG, it's a PNG, it's just completely flat, it's 2D. And a vector is different in the way that you think about the image. You can still have a 2D line art drawing, of course, but you've got to think of a vector layer as almost in a 3D space. You can manipulate things on the vector layer, whereas you can't on a raster layer. So having the vector cube in the corner of the 3D layer simply means that we can manipulate this layer with the operation tool. It's here, this is a tool operation, and what we want is the object tool. And this is going back to the vector principle of it not being a flat image. So it's an object, it's an object within the space. So we can use this to manipulate anything on the canvas if it's on a vector layer. So we're going back to the layer, the 3D layer right here. And you'll see that there's an X over this hidden icon. And every single 3D layer that you create will have a little icon right here. And this icon represents a perspective ruler. Now, if you click it, you can get a better understanding that your model is in a 3D space. So there's the vanishing point right there. That's the horizon line. It's hidden by default. All you have to do is click it. You see the triangle ruler and the cube. That just means perspective ruler and every perspective ruler will look like that. It's not just unique to the 3D. So all you have to do is click it to show it on your screen and you can shift and click to hide it again or right click and show ruler. If it's ticked, it'll show what we call the x, z axes are shown by default. So x is going back. So if you're thinking of a 3D plane, it's going away from you or towards you. The z axis is going side to side, left to right. And that is shown by default. It basically represents the floor of the image. So my door is currently on the floor and it's called the ground level in Clip Studio Paint, which is important for something later on, which we will get to. And you can toggle this on and off by going down to here, to grid. If you don't see grid, go down to this little wrench and go to perspective ruler and just click on these eyes. We can get more complicated and we can have the XY grid and we can also have the YZ grid, which doesn't really show up because we've got a very, very simple perspective. If we got more complicated, it would show up. I might actually move this model and we will see the actual perspective. I click on the ruler. All right, there we go. It's much more complicated now. So we'll get rid of all of them. We'll just have the floor right now. So the X, Z plane. So remember that X is forward and backward and Z is left to right. So we've got these little boxes right here and you can increase the size of it by going to the grid size or decrease. You can have tiny like tiles on a wall almost. And then you can go bigger and you could do window size. If you click what's called the snap to grid feature up here, so snap to grid simply means that wherever I put a line, it's going to draw on the grid. And I'll just drag it up to here so you can see. Grab a pen. That is a very big pen. Holy moly. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the floor grid. 
and we're just going to have the one that's going that way. Let's get the real G-Pen. You'll see these boxes and because I have snap to grid, everything I draw will be in perspective with the grid, which makes it very nice to draw windows. As you can see, they're getting thinner and thinner as I get further and further away. See, this one's quite thick compared to this one. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption, but if you're enjoying this video and it's helping you, please give it a like and a share so others can find it. What helped you might help someone else. If you could also subscribe, that'd be great too. There'll be plenty of videos in this series, so click that big black button below so you don't miss a single one. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. All of that can be a bit overwhelming for 3D, so I recommend that you just have the plane visible, which is just the floor, which I think by default is always on. So you'll always be able to see where your models are in regards to the floor. Now, if we want to see the perspective of this door, we zoom out very far, we'll be able to see the horizon and the vanishing points. See, this one is just way off the screen right now. And that's why digital art is just so helpful because in traditional art, you're not gonna have a piece of paper that goes that big. I'm sorry, you're not. It's gonna be very difficult to do that. So you can get some really interesting perspective and just extreme views, which are just great for art. So if we go out even further, yep, there's a third point right down there. The green ones are the perspective lines heading towards the vanishing points. So in the two point perspectives, we'll always hit the horizon, always, that's always a rule. Uh, th third point doesn't because it's pointing to either to the subterranean underground or the sky to the heavens. So let's jump back. So we're going to go into a little basic tutorial on the vanishing points control. If we use the object tool under operation and we select the green lines, a bunch of these little dots will pop up and Celsius, man, they need to overhaul these controls because they are confusing as heck. So let's zoom out very far away again. These are the main controls. Now the half circle represents the horizon line. So basically think of that half circle as the sun setting over the ground and the sky, that kind of imagery, I guess they were going for the filled circle. So these little blue dots around here, they are going to turn the perspective rulers. So what I mean by that is they're going to manipulate the vanishing point. So if I'm moving it around and turning it like that, you can see that the vanishing point is moving along the horizon based on what I'm doing right now. The empty circle in the middle of the two dots on every single one moves the perspective line. So it doesn't turn it, it just moves it along. See? And it, that doesn't change the vanishing point or the perspective. That honestly is just if you need a better guideline. So if you want to make this door perfect, you can move the to match it perfectly. It's also great if you have a photo and do you want to trace something in it, then you can just move the green lines to match the perspective in the photo and you will get the perspective of that photo, which is really useful. All right, so the diamonds cancel the vanishing line. So it goes red from green. That just means that whenever you draw, it won't follow the perspective at all. So we can turn them all off and we'll be able to free freehand. So when you click the diamond, it turns into one of those little cancel signs, a circle with the dash diagonally through the middle, and it will turn red. In order to draw perspective rulers, you will need to activate snap to special ruler, not snap to ruler, that's separate, snap to special ruler. Perspectives are considered special ruler. And then if we get a pen, we draw, I'm just going crazy right now, I'm using a mouse, remember, so. We'll just go towards our vanishing points. And that is amazing. That is just so useful. This bigger uh, arrow compass, it just moves the entire ruler. This four square diamond cancels all the perspective rulers at once. This little one just moves this. So if you don't want it in the way of your drawing, you can put it over here. When you're drawing freehand, the most common perspective used, especially in comics, is two point perspective. However, 3D objects will always give you a three-point perspective ruler because the object is existing within the 3D plane. So all axes are available. So Y is going up, you know, Y before you fly, just think going up. X is going back, just run away from your ex-girlfriend or boyfriend. And Z is left to right. Say you have built a 3D scene. So imagine there's a bed here, there are walls, it's everything. Uh, but you want to add some things freehand. You don't want to use 3D models for everything. You have the perspective ruler already there, meaning anything that you draw will automatically be in the same perspective as your 3D space, which is invaluable for backgrounds. The next few things are just the basics of what happens when you right-click. So delete ruler is pretty simple. 
it's delayed, it's gone completely. I wouldn't recommend ever using this because you can always right click and just turn off the ruler. I would always recommend keeping your rulers because you never know if you might have to go back and change something. So let's turn it on again. And you might notice that there's a little tick in between the pyramid and the ruler icons. This just means it links the two. So if I turn this off, if I manipulate the model, the perspective ruler isn't going to change. All you have to do is click the tick to get it to come back. These three options are great. So show in all layers, you'll get this pancaked square, it means that the ruler is going to be active in every single layer in your file, which means I don't have to drag this perspective ruler onto each layer to use it anymore. All I have to do is activate show in all layers. And now all of a sudden I can draw in perspective on my lines layer, even though the ruler is down on my 3D layer. The same goes for show in same folder. So if you're, this is really great if you're working on a comic and you have panels in different folders and you don't want the perspective rulers to affect any other panel but the one that you're working on. It means that anything within folder one is going to have perspective, this perspective ruler affecting it. So if I put my sketch back on and start drawing, I'm going to get nothing, no perspective. But if I go into lines, it's going to be affected because it's in the same folder. And the last one is the default, which is show only when editing target. And that's just the little vector cube there, which means that the perspective ruler is only going to be affected on the 3D layer. So as soon as I go into lines, it disappears and I've got freedom to go crazy. And that's it for this video. So please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Don't forget to like and share and thank you for watching. Bye.